for engineering services general studies video lectures visit www.isgeneralstudies.com for mechanical engineering video lectures and question and answers discussion visit www.getmec.com nutrient cycling is an important property of the ecosystem and what are these nutrients nutrients are the substances which are essential for maintaining a life means that is important for growth important for building the living tissues and import, important for life activities also so these nutrients are generally carbon nitrogen phosphorus sulfur calcium etc and these are the substances which occur in different compounds different chemical compounds which will be used by the plants to prepare food for plants to prepare food they should be mainly available in the soil it can be available in the atmosphere also like carbon but in general sense these nutrients are, should be available in the soil and the total amount of nutrients that are available in the soil is called standing state we have heard about a standing crop standing crop is the total biomass available in an ecosystem at a particular area in a particular time and standing state is the total nutrients availability in the soil and this nutrient cycling learns about the how these nutrients are cycled between the different elements in an ecosystem why we should learn this nutrient cycling simply UPSC loves this topic right otherwise this nutrient cycling is very important to understand the balance in the ecosystem and this when this balance is disturbed it causes environmental degradation right so many of the problems we saw today is related to the changes in this cycles mainly carbon dioxide cycle changes in the carbon cycle is the main reason behind climate change pollution result can be traced back to the changes in this nutrient cycles so uh, the study of this nutrient cycling is very important in an environmental perspective and what is mean by nutrient cycling nutrient cycling is a simple cycle where this nutrients travel between a reservoir and the living organisms this is a simplified version this reservoir will be having nutrients readily available to be taken up by the organisms reservoir can be atmosphere right you know carbon carbon dioxide nitrogen are available in the atmosphere which can be part of the respective cycles it can be ocean or it can be even rocks so there are different types of reservoirs the main idea behind that reservoir is that the living organisms can easily exchange the nutrients between the reservoir and the living systems so these cycles are generally called bio geo chemical cycles it means that it passes through the biological systems different organisms organic matter it passes through different geological states like water air rocks and it is essentially a chemical process what is mean by chemical process these compounds change in their chemical composition when they are passed between the different stages not simply the change in the physical state the chemical properties changes the compounds in which they are present changes 
so we study nutrient cycling as the geochemical cycles and depending on the type of the reservoir there can be two types of cycle first one is gaseous cycle and second is sedimentary cycle what is the difference between these two cycles in gaseous cycle atmosphere is the main reservoir that is the nutrients present in the form of gas and in sedimentary cycle earth crust is the main reservoir here it is atmosphere what is uh, in the earth crust earth crust is mainly rocks And what are the other difference between these two cycles? This gaseous cycle, the replacement is fast. What is meant by replacement? In a cycle, if a particular nutrient is used by the organism, say carbon is used by the organism, and it should be replenished back to the reservoir at a similar rate. Otherwise, the nutrients try to accumulate in a one particular stage. In a carbon dioxide cycle, if we uh, take the example of living organisms and reservoir, during photosynthesis, carbon dioxide will be fixed and during respiration, carbon dioxide will be released. That are almost complementary. It happens very fast. That is the replacement rate is fast in this cycle. But in sedimentary cycle, it goes to the rock form. It is not easy to get the nutrients from the rocks. Rock should be weathered or it should be uh, sold in water. It should be a solution in water like that for it to come uh, for that to come to the cycle for the use. And this makes this sedimentary cycle little imperfect. Why this is imperfect? Because all the nutrients will not be recycled back. Some will be permanently stored in the reservoir out of use in the rocks. It will be stored for years together. It won't be available in the cycle for the use. So these are the main two difference between this cycle. And now we can see some major cycles in the ecosystem. First, we can see the carbon cycle, next nitrogen cycle, then phosphorus cycle and sulfur cycle. Carbon and nitrogen are gaseous cycle, phosphorus and sulfur are sedimentary cycles. Let us see the carbon cycle. The carbon cycle is an important cycle in the ecosystem because this carbon forms almost 49% of the dry weight of the living tissues. What is dry weight? Dry weight is the biomass which is minus the water weight. If you subtract the amount of weight of water in the total biomass, we will get the dry weight. And in that, 49% of the weight is formed by carbon. And this carbon travels through the ecosystem through various reservoirs. What are these reservoirs? Reservoirs are the places where the carbon is stored such that it will be used in the cycle. Like there are many reservoirs of carbon. Atmosphere is a reservoir. In atmosphere, carbon is present in the form of carbon dioxide. It can be easily used by the plants for photosynthesis. Like that, from the reservoirs, carbon will enter the cycle in one form or other. And in uh, plant, living organism, are also under the reservoir. How carbon is stored there? They are stored in the form of organic compounds. Organic compounds are complex compounds having carbon as one of the components and they form the living tissues. Next reservoir is the ocean. Ocean is the largest reservoir. Say almost 70% of the carbon 
is present in the ocean compared to mere 1 percentage in the atmosphere. You may think that atmosphere is the largest reservoir but not ocean is the largest reservoir of carbon. And in carbon, uh, in uh, ocean carbon dioxide is in the form of dissolved carbon dioxide in what? And this carbon dioxide will be converted to bicarbonate ions and it will be used by marine organisms for building their shells in form of carbonate ions. Next reservoir is the soil itself. In soil, carbon dioxide will be present in gaseous form inside the soil particles, in between the soil particles and also as minerals, soil minerals. Soil minerals are calcium containing compounds like calcium carbonate. And next storehouse is fossil fuel. Fossil fuel is a sink. Uh, it is a sink. It is a sink in the sense it is relatively stored for a longer time. And this fossil fuel is essentially organic compounds which are stored for a longer time. And rocks. Rocks are also a sink. It will be stored almost permanently out of the cycle. And these rocks are also carbon dioxide present in, carbon present in the form of minerals like carbonate rocks, Car calcium carbonate, magnesium carbonate like that rocks, uh, minerals will be there in the rocks. Among this, the atmospheric reservoir is the most important. Why? Because we know the atmospheric carbon dioxide plays a major role in the climate. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. What does greenhouse gas does? It will prevent the earth radiation from escaping to the outer atmosphere. Thus will increase the temperature of the atmosphere and causes warming. And this carbon dioxide levels are important factor in the determining the biological activities. Now let us see what are the process which adds carbon dioxide to the atmosphere and what are the process which removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere because balancing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is very important. Let us see the process. Main process which comes to our mind is photosynthesis, right? What is photosynthesis? Green plants absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So, the carbon dioxide level in the atmosphere reduces due to photosynthesis. And its opposite process is respiration, which happens in all living tissues, which adds carbon dioxide back to the atmosphere when they digest their food, when they use their food for their biological activities. And next process is decomposition. What is decomposition? Decomposition happens here. Decomposes act on dead organic matter and their excreta and releases the carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. So decomposes generally convert the complex organic compounds back to the simpler forms like carbon dioxide, water and all. Next process is combustion. Combustion is essentially a human made, uh, human made process where we combust the fossil fuels or wood or any other biomass for our energy needs and in this process the carbon compounds in it will be converted to carbon dioxide and energy and this carbon dioxide will be released to the atmosphere. So combustion process also adds carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Next process is sedimentation. Sedimentation is the process by which essentially the rocks are forming. Carbon dioxide will form the soil minerals, carbonate minerals like calcium carbonate and all. Silicate uh, minerals will be converted to carbonate minerals 
during the rock formation process and it will be stored carbon dioxide will be stored in this for a relatively longer time and this process removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and one more process is there this volcanism what happens during volcanic activity the rocks will be melted to form magma and the carbon compounds in the rocks will be converted to carbon dioxide and the carbon dioxide gas escapes when the lava erupts so this volcanic activity adds carbon dioxide to the atmosphere so you remember this main process and how it will affect the engineering services general studies video lectures visit www.iesgeneralstudies.com for mechanical engineering video lectures and question and answer discussion visit www.gedmap.com